everybody. So uh, the story behind this wallet, this is called the Oracle Wallet. And it's called the Oracle Wallet because it has a little bit of magic in it. But this was a wallet I designed that was going to be our 15th anniversary release. And then we got the opportunity to do the tie-dye shell with um, Ricardo. So this wallet never saw the light of day. And a lot of people wanted the, the pattern. So this is a tutorial and walkthrough on how to make it. And then the pattern will be in the, descri the description below. And I apologize, I still have that cactus on my tongue. So talking is an issue, but I'm gonna get through it. So, so um, the pattern will come like this. I haven't fully cut it out yet because I wanna show you some tricks on how to cut this out. And the whole premise of this wallet, this is the wallet itself. Looks pretty plain from the front. From the back, it has some uh, tricks to it. So, you take a card, you put it in the back, you have a normal thumb slider. This one is brand new, so it's not broken in. But eventually, you, your favorite card, you can slide in and out. However, when you put it in and open the wallet, you can also access it from the inside. So, you, so there's, two, there's th two slots, the back slot, is the one that allows you access from the back, like that. Now the thumb slider, like I said, it works once the cart, once the wallet's broken in. Um, this is just uh, this is some Tochigi natural veg tan. I just made this one, and it takes a while to slick up. It's a little too sticky right now. Um, so hoping that no one can steal my AAA card number, but if you need a tow, you know. You gotta do what you gotta do. Um, we're gonna get to making this. Now the pattern itself is very simple looking and the construction is pretty simple. It's not that hard of a wallet to make. The one thing you are going to want are these little, the tiniest rivets. Um, I'll get you a size on these. These are integral to the wallet because it holds this whole corner in place. Uh, there's no stitching here. So we're gonna wanna put these rivets in. For leather, I'm using Corba calf in navy. This is an, actually a buffalo calf leather from India. And I'm doing that because the grain, you're going to want to use something that's thin, three, three and a half ounces, but dense. So this is already pretty dense, but we're also going to token all the back of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out my pieces and then I'm going to cut what I need. This leather is super supple. Um, I know India isn't really known for the highest grade leather, but luckily I brought this in and we've been using some of it and it's, it's pretty serious stuff. Um, and I'm going to token all the back. That will stiffen it up even more. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna start by just rubbing it in. And then I don't have a slicker but you don't need to have a slicker to do the slicking, um, like a like a glass slicker. What I'm going to use is just, I just have a plastic T-square that should do the job. Just the flat part. Pick one end and slick like this. And then last thing we need to do is punch the holes for the snaps, remembering that they're probably gonna need to be bigger when we punch them in leather. So now that our token oil is dry and slicked, it basically feels like the front of the leather. Uh, that's what we want, a little bit more firm. And we're gonna just trace out our pattern. So, God, a dream. so full disclosure, I've only used this leather two or three times uh, and made pieces to use because I would never want to, uh, I mean, I trust you picking out a nice leather, but I would never want to be like, try this leather and then it sucks. Um, but the pieces I have made, they age really wonderfully and working with it is a dream, mostly because it's calf leather. Um, I think there is sort of a, people are a little leery of leather that comes from India and that is, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting healthy animals that are treated right, 
Um, but from what I understand, this tannery has been fully vetted. The animals are treated correctly. This is all byproduct from the meat industry. Um, and that's the kind of leather that we use. And they do a really nice job at the tannery. These are finished, as you can see, totally flawlessly. Not a mark on them. We're going to line that up as best as we can. Nice hit through. Flip it around. Nice hit through. Nice to bring it back. And we're just going to connect these two with a ruler and a nice straight edge. There we go. I'm going to take two of the rivets that I'm using and I'm going to put them upwards through the rivet holes. Well, as best I can to get this aligned like that. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it down. Now remember, there is a side to this. So this side is going to be where our snap is, meaning this side is going to be where our magic side is. And I'm going to lightly trace a line. We're not going to trace here because we're not going to be sewing here. I'm going to lightly trace a line here. I'm going to go around the corner and trace a line here. We're going to sew about up to there. Now, I'm torn on this one. Sometimes I use glue, sometimes I use tape. For this, we're going to use tape so that we can reposition. The only issue is that the tape that we need to use is so slim that sometimes it's not strong enough because this leather is so smooth. But I think if we hammer it down enough and we are loving and kind to it, it'll uh, it'll be good to us today. And of course you want your tape on the inside of your line. And we'll break this tape away with a bone folder once we have the piece together. I'm going to put down our top piece here, and then I'm going to do my best to follow that line that we scribed. And if you see one side of the other drifting a little bit like that, don't worry about that. We can sand that down. There is some, there's trim allowance built in, and everything will fit no problem. This is a bit of a bigger wall than it needs to be because it's a little more complicated to put together, even though it looks simple. So I built in like an eighth of an inch on either side if you need to sand it down. <clears throat> so we're gonna have a double running stitch line here. On the front, on the first piece, I'm not gonna run the stitch into the rivet hole. I'm gonna run it next to the rivet hole. On the front stitch, I'm gonna run the stitch line into the rivet hole. That'll lock everything together. It can get a little confusing, but it's not that bad. You don't have to do that. You can see here, I stopped right before the rivet hole but I like seeing the stitch go right into the rivet hole. However, on this side, with the curve, I think it looks a lot cooler to have the stitch line trail off and then there'd be a rivet right there. So, we have our stitching chisels and we need to remember which side. So this is the side that the card's gonna slide in and out of. So I'm gonna take my calipers and I'm going to go start at this curve, go around, And my goal is to stop my stitching right before this curve. So as soon as you even start to think about a curve right there, stop. We don't want any stitching in here because it's going to make our card easier to pull in and out. I'm going to keep preaching the gospel of the LDH scissors. Love them. They, we, it's all we use in the shop now. They're unbelievable. And they're back in stock, I think. Uh, first link in the description. Best $25 to spend in your shop. But I'm very excited to use this color. I think it's going to work really well with the navy. Uh, the reason I went with a 3.85 stitching chisel spacing on this 
is because it's a smaller piece and I think it'll match the smaller rivets. And we're going to have something a little different for the snap that I think will play with scale a little bit in an interesting way. Nothing groundbreaking, just I just wanted to give it a try. So before we go any further, um, we're going to use some new stuff that I've never used before, and I don't know if it's, if it's existed or if it's brand new, but I'm very excited about it. We're going to do a magnetic closure on these. Now usually magnetic closures, you have to use, you have to bend things and, you know, bend tabs and cover them up. Well, Bakwa Guy carries these magnetic closures that have snap caps on the back. And not only do they carry them, so these are the 18 millimeter. They come in 14 as well. I'm trying an 18 because this is a nice big opening and I think it'll look cool. Not only do they carry them, they also carry a setter for it. And we're going to use the setter in the hand setter. It also works in the press. They're super easy to install. They make everything feel super luxury, super luxurious, um, because the magnet itself has a male and female dot, so it clips into place. The first thing I'm going to do is put the universal cap onto the setter handle. Remember, you can, if you decide to upgrade to a press, they design all these so that, the reason I love this, is that it's up, you don't have to buy all these again. You can, all of your dies work in the press the minute that you bring the press into the house. So, you just have to make sure that you use the right die for the right piece. So they're going to come. I don't know how they're going to come. Um, I ordered these off the site just like anyone else. Um, so they're going to come with, bless you, they're going to come with the matching polarized caps. So this is bottom and top um, magnets. Then they're going to come with the snap, which goes on the other side. So I tend to put the female part, or whatever you want to refer to it as, um, on the bottom, it's very fancy, and the female setter is the one with the male part on the setter. It clips in just like a normal uh, double cap rivet does. You line it up, you take your setter, and just like that, you have a lovely magnetic closure that has, you don't have tabs you have to cover up, you don't have to sew a patch over it, it's just there. Let me give another tap for good luck because uh, I'm in setter, I'm in machine mode right now and I don't really know. That should be good enough. So on the top, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to remember to put, well first we have to switch, so it's a three-piece die set. Unlike a lot of die sets, I think this is like 42 bucks. It's not that expensive at all, not including the base, but um, normally it's similar to three-piece die sets that I've bought are like in the hundreds of dollars. So I was like, whoa, this is a breath of fresh air. So for this one, I'm going to put my magnet in first. I want, did I even bring out a snap for this one? I might have, but we'll, we'll bring out another. Oh, it's right here. I want the snap to look like a snap. So all I have to do is put the snap face on the outside, and people will never know that it's magnetic. They'll think it's a regular snap. And then install that. And they're nice and low profile, like super low profile, even the fixed snap part. Now we're not completely put together yet, but it looks really nice, and it is so nice to use. It's just strong enough where it's not going to fall apart on you, but you feel really confident that it's going to keep your stuff safe. So that is, if you want to zoom in on my bag, of course it'll be a link in the description, but we're using the 18 millimeter version. 14 millimeter is obviously just a little bit smaller. Um, I like them both. I, I don't have a preference. I'm not, I don't know. The one thing I don't know is if the 18 millimeter magnet is stronger than the 14 millimeter magnet. 
I would assume so because it's a bigger magnet, which is one of the reasons why I'm using this over the 14 on a card wallet. Um, I've made a bracelet with a 14 that works perfectly. But check them out because these I'm going to be using these a lot from now on because they're just so they're luxurious, but they're also like super easy to install. You have a lot less trouble with them than you do with just regular snaps. And they're magnets. Who doesn't love magnets somewhere out? You know? So from a longevity standpoint, um, you're putting a lot less stress on the leather. I think that's one thing that people don't point out enough. When you install snaps, every time you open that snap, you're pulling really hard. Not really hard, but you get a little pull on leather. This way, you have almost a washer on one side. And when you pull, it's a lot more gentle on the leather around it, so you're not going to get a lot of stretch. All right, so we have our glue dry to the touch, which is with the cement, that's how you want to do it. I'm going to use our rivets again to line everything up as best I can. So I'm going to pop those through there. And if you can do these one at a time too, I believe, I'm just going to try to do them both at once. But we want to make sure that the rivet is going to line up. And we're going to sand this edge down, so don't worry about any scragglies. You can see we have a nice even edge there, so we can get rid of that rivet if it wants to, if it wants to stay. I'm not going to yell at it. And the same thing on this side. And we're nice and lined up. So we will take the rivets out. And now remember on this side, the only thing holding this together is going to be the rivet. This is the, the magic side, right? This is where the card comes in and out on both sides. So I'll give this a tap with the hammer, with the right side of the hammer. I'm going to go give it a quick sand, and then we'll do our sewing and our, fi and our finish. So we have our one side all sewn up that's going to be our sort of magic side, the slider. But on the other side, we're almost done. And I wanted to show you how I sew this part so that it looks like, well, so that it does, the, um, so that the thread goes into where the rivet is, but it doesn't wrap around the outside. It's a very clean look. Since we use the tape, we can just slightly fold this. And all we're going to do, I guess we didn't even need to do it on that hole, but the next hole we will need to do, and with our back stitch we'll need to do it, we're just going to go in and fold this so we don't stab it, like that, and kind of keep your, if you're sewing with our technique, keep your uh, finger holding that part down, and then I'm actually going to go into the rivet hole. I'm going to use that as my final hole, and then I'm going to backstitch three, or two, or however many you like to backstitch. And that's, besides that, that's pretty much the most complicated part of assembling this wallet, is just that one little piece. And once we get this riveted down, it'll look all nice and flat and fancy. And then I always like to pick where my back st stitch ends by where what's going to be co covered. On this wallet, this part's going to be covered. So even though it's the front of the wallet, I'm going to end my back stitch here because you're not going to see it when it's closed. We're going to set our rivets by hand just because with the small ones. So that's the base universal and handle universal. All the dies just slide in. Um, with these little tiny rivets, I find I have more control. Now, of course, if you had to set thousands of them, you'd want to get good with the with the press. But to do two wallets, um, or to do one wallet, um, I'm okay using the press. So the wallet, the rivet size we're using is six millimeter cap, seven point nine millimeter post. So teeny, 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 tiny. So you want to make sure that you're not punching holes too big. Now, what we're going to do is set these rivets just like any other rivet. We just want to make sure that we get through all of our layers. And that's why I like the 7.9 millimeter post, 
because it gives you room to do that. I'll put that guy down there, put that there. And these, even on the base and not on the machine, are self-centering. So we have a perfectly set rivet. And then on this side, this is the important one because this is the one that's holding together this whole side of the wallet. And I've designed this about nine months ago, and I've used it since, and uh, it holds strong. You're good to go on this. So we'll clip that in, put that there, and set it. Now you do have a decision made. Since we're using, there's our basically finished piece. We have to do a little finishing, but since our magnets are flat, right, our rivets are round, what you can do is take a hammer and just lightly on your granite flatten your rivets too. So now everything inside is flat and it kind of looks more similar. And here we go. Here is our final Oracle wallet. Take our AAA card, slide it in there. With the corbel, it works perfect. There's no break-in period at all. So you, the idea is that you have your most used wallet, your most used card, you can get your coffee, you can get your gas. And then when you open it up, this magnet is just, it feels so luxurious. And you can also access it from the front as well. So you can put a card in, and then if you need it quickly, you can slide it right out. So this is what it looks like in navy. This is uh, the corbel leather. It is a buffalo calf. Uh, this is the burnt orange braided wax thread from main thread. And these are the six millimeter by whatever they were, 9.2 millimeter post. 7.9 millimeter post rivets to make this exact wallet. And this is definitely the best version. You can see with this one, it's not broken in yet. Um, I can put this in, but it's difficult to slide it out. You have to use, you don't want to use a leather that's too thick, but you don't want to use a leather that's too soft either. Um, this is as close as I've gotten in making these wallets to getting the perfect fit. Um, the tokenol absolutely killed it with getting this nice soft back. Um, you also remember do have a full cash slash card slot in the front as well. So while it is, you know, look at this magic trick, right? And it does work really well. This is just a great all around wallet. And I would highly suggest going with the magnetic closure. It adds that much more presence. Um, this is the 18 millimeter. So I wanted to see what it would look like with a bigger attachment and also if the magnet was stronger. The 18 millimeter is absolutely strong enough to hold it closed as a wallet. Uh, the 14 should be. So if it looks like it's a little too big to you, try going with the 14 if you want. Um, but this, I like, I like the look of this and it's really amazing how instead of going with a snap, going with a simple magnet makes this so much more high end feeling that I feel like if you're really going for that upper echelon feel for your brand or for your products, um, these new, I don't know if they're new, but I'm gonna call them new because I just found out about them. These new magnetic snaps that have the male and female that click together like this, so they're always in the same place, um, highly suggested because you get the click of a snap without any of the um, maintenance. There's really no chance that this is gonna break um, it's, unless it becomes demagnetized. And so that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, the pattern will be in the description for three or four bucks. Uh, I worked really hard on this one. This pattern took like two and a half months to make. I hope you guys pick it up and enjoy it. It's a really cool wallet to give people because of the extra slide out part. Um, it's just a fun design. It's super fun to make because it's quick, but it's also substantial. And that's it. I know I already re I'm going to repeat myself, but thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.